Welcome. I'm Louis K. Lally, the author of Die Laughing. Growing up, I had a passion for 1950s science fiction and horror movies. The more sensational the title, the better I liked it. The day the Earth stood still, I married a monster from outer space. The Blob, Killers from Space, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. The 1950s, though usually portrayed as an idyllic time, was a cauldron of anxiety on the verge of boiling over. There were the McCarthy witch hunts that caused friends to turn on each other. There was the desegregation battle at Little Rock in Arkansas. Elvis Presley and rock and roll had burst on the scene. Both were considered dangerous, not only to the youth, but to the moral fabric of the nation at large. As I grew older, I realized that the best of the sci-fi and horror films were more than just about bug-eyed monsters trying to conquer the world. They reflected the conflicts of that era. Many of them dealt with bigger themes like war and peace, conformity, intolerance, and even God. The 1950s was also the era of live television. Like rock and roll, it was a golden age that was discovering and formulating itself. There was a unique electricity that was in the airwaves. In Die Laughing, which is at times humorous and at times dark, I wanted to capture all these elements. The black and white wonderment of flying saucers, visitors from outer space, communist paranoia, and the period of no do-over television. I also wanted my story, like the movies I grew to love from that era, to have deeper themes. That led me to 1956 and my protagonist, Sam E. Lakeside, a troubled comedian haunted by his miserable childhood. Sam has an overwhelming desire to make his mark in the world, and his big break comes when he's booked on the Steve Allen Show, which was the kingmaker of its era. Sam's ambition takes a major turn when he's beamed aboard a spaceship and is forced to participate in a plan to rob the Earth of its oil by shape-shifting aliens and their leader, a power-hungry mobster. The aliens can only shape themselves into people who have been broadcast over TV airwaves. I had a lot of fun with that one. At times, they may take the form of Audrey Meadows, Ed Sullivan, gossip columnist Hedda Hopper, and even the puppet Howdy Doody. But when they murder Sam's best friend and manager, the joke's over and Sam vows revenge. He recruits a blacklisted comic book writer and the mobster's girlfriend and drags them cross country to thwart the aliens. Their journey takes them to New York City and the Steve Allen Show, where Sam is forced to choose between what he wants most in the world, to be a star or the planet's survival. 